powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. Just one of three people accused in the gruesome murder of a Crow Agency woman burned alive last year maintains her innocence. Angelica Whiteman admitted today she helped kill Roy Lynn Rides Horse, a charge that carries a mandatory life sentence. But prosecutors could cut Whiteman a break if she testifies against her co-defendant at trial. Q2's Asia Gore was in the courtroom and brings us more on what Whiteman had to say. Asia. Janelle, investigators have long believed the victim was beaten unconscious before she was set on fire. But today, Angelica Whiteman said the victim was awake for the horrific assault. Whiteman pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting in first-degree murder, which carries a mandatory life sentence. But prosecutors say if Whiteman provides substantial testimony against 19-year-old DeMarzio Sanchez, she could see as little as 25 years behind bars. Whiteman sobbed as she told the judge she beat Ride's horse and helped strangle the victim. Whiteman and Sanchez offered the victim a ride home from the Kirby Saloon. During the ride, Whiteman and Ride's horse got into a verbal altercation, and Whiteman says she wanted to kick Ride's horse out of the vehicle and make her walk home. But instead, Sanchez drove to a remote location and ordered the victim out of the vehicle. Whiteman says Ride's horse was beaten and then strangled by Sanchez with a bandana before he demanded Whiteman take over. Whiteman admits she strangled the victim, but says Ride's horse did not lose consciousness. Sanchez then allegedly stripped the victim, doused her with gasoline, and set her on fire. The victim died three months later in the hospital. A third suspect, Frank Sanchez, is awaiting sentencing for accessory to murder. Sentencing for Whiteman is set for January. Janelle? Thanks, Asia. Now, prosecutors noted even if Whiteman testifies against Sanchez, prosecutors do not have to recommend a lesser sentence. The popular woman who admitted she stabbed her boyfriend to death when he tried to end their relationship last year will spend just four years in prison. 20-year-old Winter Old Rock sentenced this afternoon in U.S. District Court in Great Falls on the charge of voluntary manslaughter. Old Rock admitted she fatally stabbed her boyfriend, Robert Pinkerton, at a house on the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. Now, Pinkerton told Old Rock he was moving away, which started a fight. Witnesses say Old Rock left the house and returned with two knives. During a verbal fight, Old Rock then stabbed the victim in the heart, killing him. Prosecutors agreed the murder happened in the heat of passion. A former law enforcement officer with the Bureau of Indian Affairs allegedly threatened to arrest a woman if she didn't have sex with him. Dana Bullcoming appeared in U.S. District Court in Billings on Tuesday. He's charged with deprivation of rights under the color of law and two counts of making a false statement to a federal officer. According to the indictment, Bullcoming was a BIA officer in the Lame Deer area in October of 2015 when the crimes took place. Bullcoming allegedly coerced a woman into having sex with him by threatening to arrest her if she refused. Bullcoming later denied the charges. Tonight, he is not in custody. A package of correctional reform bills passed in the 2017 legislature aims to reduce the number of people in prison here in Montana. Tonight, MTN's Mackenzie Frost explores how a new professional board of pardons and parole is supposed to work toward that goal. The new full-time professional parole board is comprised of individuals who have extensive knowledge in corrections and law enforcement. Governor Steve Bullock has appointed the five new members, including Chairman Scott Cruz, a former FBI agent, and Annette Carter, who worked for the Corrections Department on reentry programs for inmates. The old board, comprised of part-time volunteer members, made decisions based on recommendations from its own staff. Those recommendations often differed from those made by prison staffers who had closely worked with inmates on parole plans, allowing for inconsistencies in decisions. When we don't use those same factors, it can be inconsistent and we might make mistakes. An idea Montana State Prison's new warden, Michael Fletcher, is looking forward to as well. Before they uh, haven't been actively involved 365 days a year, and now they're um, giving us feedback on what we can do better, and there's a lo lot more of a collaborative effort between the two entities. The idea is to create a clear path for low-risk inmates to gain parole if they meet certain requirements and have a plan to help them succeed outside of prison walls. 
Part of that plan is a risk and needs assessment for every criminal offender also required by the new laws. Now using that risk assessment, we're going to be talking the same language. They're going to be looking at the programming that we're going to want people to have. As part of its overall plan, state correction leaders are modifying data systems to track the success of offenders leaving prison or on supervision outside of prison. The parole board is just starting to discuss how it will measure the success. But until we can really say that that's an accurate portrayal of how things are working out, we have to get all of these changes implemented and working together in concert before we'll really see how effective it's being. As these changes are implemented, Board Chairman Cruz says he hopes one thing is known to each inmate, family member, and the public. Everyone who comes before this parole board should expect to be treated the same way, fairly and consistently. Of course, it's too early to know the effects of this change, but one thing is clear. The Pro Board and the Corrections Department say they want to be on the same page of finding a more consistent path for inmates to re-enter the community. In Deer Lodge, Mackenzie Frost, MTN News. Thanks, Mackenzie. Now, the other board members are Renee Bauer, former Helena Business Improvement District Executive Director, Daryl Bell, a U.S. Marshal, and Missoula Assistant Public Defender, Christina Lucero. Well, the state budget picture is not improving, and as Q2 first reported last night, now Governor Steve Bullock is asking agencies to submit plans to cut up to 10 percent of their budgets. It also looks like at least some of those plans will take effect this year. The governor's budget director made the formal request to all state agencies today and wants the plans by next Friday. Dan Villa says the state needs to cut $227 million from its $4.6 billion budget to get things back in balance. He says ballooning firefighting costs and bad tax revenue estimates are to blame for this budget shortfall. Republican lawmaker Nancy B Balance of Hamilton says the Democratic governor is taking the right steps to balance the budget for now. She says there's no need for lawmakers to come back into special session to approve new taxes to prevent any cuts. There is and was no appetite for any sort of revenue adjustments or revenue enhancements by the majority. This is the place we find ourselves in. Um, this administration will focus on minimizing impacts to Montanans to the extent we can. Uh, but when you're talking about $227 million in service reductions, spending reductions, uh, there will be impacts. Governor Bullock will decide in October where those cuts will be made. Medical marijuana providers in Billings with hundreds of patients are scrambling. This after Monday night City Council decision to prohibit medical marijuana storefronts and dispensaries in city limits. Q2's Dustin Kleeman spoke with a couple owners who are pushing back. Dustin. Good evening, Janelle. Montana Advanced Caregivers has weathered nearly a decade of legislative decisions and setbacks. But after Monday's decision, its owners are ready to continue fighting in the business as well as for patients. The dispensary, which is located down the street from a, the police barn, is not allowed to continue operation in city limits. Now, with more than 460 patients, owners Richard Abramite and Jason Smith are pushing forward with their business plans at the 7,500 square foot facility. After being in operation for nine years, setbacks in the legislature, the city ordinance decision isn't pushing them to pack up and move. According to state law, Montana Advanced Caregivers is currently in compliance. If you were to ask, are we still serving patients? Yes. Are we breaking the law? Maybe a city ordinance, a misdemeanor. Is it worth lives? Hell yes, it is. We're being advised by our legal team and be assured, as always, we will be following law. The owners did present a business license that they had received from the city issued this year, despite testimony at council that the city does not provide business license for companies in violation of federal law. I also reached out to nearby business neighbor AmeriClean and the owner, Jim Pearson, said, quote, I've got nothing but good things to say about those boys. And he reiterated he's had zero issues. Do you know? All right. Thanks very much, Dustin. A bear that created a big stir in the Billings Heights and on the Q2 Facebook page this morning has been euthanized. Billings police located the bear in a backyard at Ahoy Avenue and Bench Boulevard just after 7 a.m. Wardens with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks arrived about an hour later. After they shot the bear with a tranquilizer, it climbed a tree in the backyard before falling to the ground. Bob Gibson with FWP says the bear was put down because it had internal injuries that would prevent it from surviving in the wilderness. He says those injuries were likely caused by today's events. He reminds people to keep their properties free of all bear attractants. 
Gibson explained this is the time of year when bears are trying to gain weight for the winter. It's likely the bear found reliable food sources in the city limits and would not move on. Up next on your Q2 530 News, after a little girl lost her life in a tragic fire, her mother is planning to keep her legacy alive and running. And in sports, Scott shows us how Rockies men and women are answering the call to help the folks in Houston. And coming up in weather, what's the deal with the smoke? That's the big question for us today, and we will give you an answer what we think it'll do tomorrow. And then coming up this weekend, a possible record high on Sunday. You're not going to believe how hot it's going to get. We'll tell you all about it coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green.